Okay, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Um, there are some instructions uh, just informing you that you can participate in the webinar using your computer, microphone, and speakers, or by dialing in uh, through your telephone. This can be found in the GoToWebinar software interface on the right-hand side of your screen. If it's not expanded, you can just click on the orange arrow to expand it. Um, we will have time for question and answer at the end, but since we have a lot of people, we have uh, about 100 people signed up for the webinar today. Um, if you want to ask a question at the end of the webinar, um, I'll just ask that you click on the raise hand button, and then I can unmute you to ask your question. During the webinar, if you have any questions, just type them into the chat panel or the questions panel, and Becca will pick up any questions that you might have during the presentation. Okay, so um, my name is Derek Bovey. I work here as a product specialist in our sales and marketing department. And today's webinar, we're going to give you kind of an in-depth look uh, at the ZoomText large print keyboard, um, you know, tell you what it's all about, and then also go through uh, a demonstration of what all the function keys do and uh, some cool things that you can do in the ZoomText keyboard software. So for those of you that aren't familiar with our keyboard, uh, what is it? ZoomText large print keyboard is very simply, um, you know, high contrast color schemes. There's the black on yellow that you can see at the top on the right hand side, and a white on black version of the keyboard. Um, these are large print keycaps. The keys themselves are normal size, but the font is a large 36 point font, so it's very easy to see even in low light. Um, the other benefit that you have is there are 18 dedicated function keys across the top of the keyboard that do specific zoom text functions. Um, so basically you have one touch access to most of the zoom text features um, such as starting the program, turning on any of the enhancements, changing your magnification level, uh, or using any of the reading tools. So why is this helpful? Well, it eliminates the need uh, to either use the zoom text toolbar uh, to keep bringing that up from the taskbar or memorizing hotkeys, like memorizing the hotkey for app reader, which is Alt Shift A. Uh, sometimes that can be, you know, hard to recall what that is, or even do that key combination. So the Zoom Text keyboard gives you one key to press to do a lot of those functions. Um, and along with that, most of the uh, essential features are uh, in those function keys, such as, you know, your color filtering. Um, a lot of times people like turning on the color filter to read text, but when they're viewing family photos or pictures on Facebook, you want to turn that off. So you can just press the button to toggle the color filter on and off, which is really nice and convenient. Um, also, since the keyboards themselves are high contrast, uh, it helps you, you know, your ability to see them even in low lighting conditions. Um, and this also allows you to be more accurate on the keyboard uh, with less eye strain and fatigue. Uh, another thing is that it connects via USB or PS2 connection. Uh, most of you are going to have USB ports on your computer, so um, that shouldn't be a problem. So you can use this pretty much anywhere. Um, one quick note on the PS2 connection, if that is something that you need, um, older machines used to have PS2 ports for the mouse and the keyboard. If you need one of those, um, please let our sales department know when you order it, and we'll put one of those adapters uh, in the box for you. So that's what the keyboard is. Um, and you know, some of the things that we're going to cover, we're basically going to walk you through uh, what all of those function keys do. Um, you know, and what we're going to do in the webinar is actually show you, um, using the ZoomText camera feature, we're going to take a look at the actual camera and me using it in real time, and then ZoomText on the other half of the screen. So you'll be able to see how this works um, immediately in real time. Then we'll also show you um, how to use the ZoomText keyboard software. In order for those function keys to work, there is a software installation that takes place um, to allow those function keys to do what they do. Um, but there's a lot of cool things that you can do uh, with those function keys, such as reassign them to different ZoomText features um, or Windows commands. Uh, or you can even have them uh, launch an application, web page, or document. So we'll go through that as well. Okay, so we'll go ahead and jump into the live demo. Um, the first thing I'm actually going to show you is what you get in the box um, for the ZoomText keyboard. So um, I've got the keyboard box underneath my camera here. I'm just going to go ahead and open it up and show you what you get in the package. 
So inside, when you open it up, you have your Zimtex keyboard software, which you'll need to install in order for those function keys to work. Uh, you've got a user guide, which is in large print, um, that tells you all about the keyboard, how to plug it in, um, and about the software as well, what you can do with it. Okay, then we have the actual keyboard itself. Um, this one is the white on black. So I'm just going to go ahead and take this out of here so you can see that. Bear with me while I struggle with this plastic. Okay. So here's our large print keyboard. Um, as you can see, this is the white on black. Your 18 dedicated function keys are across the top of the keyboard. Um, again, normal size keys, just large print lettering that you can see on here. So that's what you get in the box. The keyboard itself, software CD, and the user guide. So if you order a keyboard, you'll know exactly what you're going to get in the box. Okay. Um, now I'm going to switch over to the black on yellow keyboard. That's going to be the one that we're going to use to demonstrate with here today. Um, now the colors uh, with this, I'm using a webcam to show this to you, so the yellow looks a little dull on the webcam. Um, it's actually much more vivid in person, so um, if you look at the pictures on our website, and I'll show those later, you get a better impression as to what the real color is, not what the webcam is showing. So, okay, um, and we'll go ahead and walk through a few things. I'm going to switch over to a split screen view, so you can see the keyboard at the top half of the screen, and we've got Zoom text on the bottom half running on my Windows desktop. Okay, so... Um, let's go through what some of these feature keys do. The first one here in the upper left, um, this is actually going to start and exit ZoomText. So if I press this button now while ZoomText is running, um, whoops, let's see what happened here. There we go. I get a prompt here asking me if I want to exit ZoomText. Now, I don't want to do that right now because that will exit us out of everything, um, but that button will, let me click on no and press it again, okay, and we've got our prompt that comes up here. All right, so you can just start Zoom Text from that function key. Um, I'll do that at the end because I don't want to restart and then have to reset up the camera and things like that. Um, but that's what the first key does. The one next to that, it looks like a magnifying glass. Actually, what I'm going to do here is move the camera in a little bit closer to some of these function keys so that we can see these a little bit better. And let me just adjust the focus of the camera. Okay, there we go. That's a little bit better. All right, so <clears throat> the next button, which is right here, which looks like a magnifying glass, that's going to bring up the Zoom Text toolbar. Whoops, actually, that enables and disables Zoom Text. Sorry, I got confused there. So that turns Zoom Text off. If I press it again, okay, we've, we've re enabled Zoom Text. So, first button here start and exit Zoom Text, enable and disable. This button will bring up the Zoom Text toolbar. It looks like a toolbox. Okay, so you can see I press the button, press it again, it minimizes the toolbar. So that will bring it up and close it. Okay, for the next button, I'm just going to open a Word document here so you can see this. Uh, the next button looks like a color wheel. This is going to turn on and off your color filter. So as you can see, it turns on my color scheme, press it again turns it off. So all of these buttons effectively act as a toggle. Okay, so you've got your color filter here, your pointer enhancement, which is the mouse pointer icon. Um, so you can see there's my large yellow. I press it again, turns it back to the normal pointer. Okay, the one next to that, which looks like um, kind of like an eye bar, that's going to turn on your cursor enhancement. So you can see that here uh, to the left of the word the got our cursor enhancement on and off as I press that key. So a lot of the, um, or, or basically all of the enhancements you can toggle on and off from the keyboard right in this section of three keys here. So starting at the left, just to um, start from the beginning, start and exit Zoom Text, enable and disable the program, bring up the toolbar and minimize the toolbar, and then you've got buttons to turn on and off any of the enhancements. Okay, the next um, set of buttons here, the two buttons here, 
are for your finders. So you've got desktop finder, okay, which allows you to search for any files or programs on your computer. And then web finder next to that, which a lot of you may have seen us demonstrate in the Zoom Text 10 webinar. Now right now if I use it, it's not going to come up, it's just going to ding because I don't have a web browser open. Um, I'm in Microsoft Word, but if I open a web browser like Firefox and press the web finder button, okay, you can see it open up web finder. Web finder allows you to search, navigate, and filter through content on the web. Okay. Now, the four pack of keys here, um, these are going to allow you to change your magnification level up by pressing the plus button and down by pressing the minus button. Okay. Um, for those of you that are familiar with Zoom Text, usually that's Alt plus and Alt minus on the keyboard. Now you just have these plus and minus keys here to change your magnification level, which is really nice. Um, Next to those two buttons, the up and down arrows, those will adjust your speech rate. I have to turn speech on in order to hear that. Speech enabled. Okay. Speech rate, 60%. Speech rate, 65%. Okay, and I'll press the down arrow. Speech rate, 60%. All right, so that will adjust the speech rate. Okay, so these four pack of keys again, uh, up and down, or yeah, basically in the up and down position, the plus and minus are your magnification level. Uh, the down and up arrows are for your speech rate. Okay. Next to that, we have the Zoom Text reading tools. So the first one here is to start App Reader. So if I press this button, it's going to immediately start reading for me since I'm in the do uh, I'm in a Word document. So I'll press it. The Gettysburg Address. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation. Okay, I'm just going to hit the escape key. So, you know, literally you have one button to start the reading tool. So App Reader is the first one here. Then we've got Doc Reader next to that. Zoom Text Whoops. in the Zoom Text feature you selected is not available. Gettysburg Address. There, but the Gettysburg Address. Doc Reader. Let's try that again. Zoom Text in the Zoom Text feature you select. Gettysburg okay. Address. Doc Compatibility Mode Mike. I may have Reader. messed something up here, but anyway, this key will launch Doc Reader. Zoom text in the Zoom text feature you you oh, is not available. I'm sorry, yeah. that's what it is. Doc Reader, you can't actually launch when you're in the camera feature. So um, I'm not going to be able to show it to you here, but if I press this key, it will launch Doc Reader. Next to that, we've got the Speak It tool, um, which allows you to uh, select text, like a, a, an area of text that you want to have read. So if I press this button, Speak it tool. It'll turn on the speak it tool, and then I can left click, make a selection, the Gettysburg address, and have Zoom Text read that text back to me. Okay. So those are your reading tools right here. And again, Doc Reader's not going to work with the camera turned on. Um, it's only going to work when you're. Uh, if I use the hotkeys, actually, I don't think it'll work when I use the hotkeys either. You can't be in the Zoom Text camera mode and use Doc Reader. That is one limitation to Doc Reader. Okay. Now next to that, the last three keys here, or this section of two, um, this toggles your typing echo modes. Typing echo enabled for keys and words. Okay. So this will cycle through keys, words, keys and words, or turning it off. Typing echo disabled. All right. So this controls what Zoom Text does as you type. So you can have it echo the keys. Typing echo enabled for keys. Words. Typing echo enabled for words. Or both keys and words. Typing echo enabled for keys and words. Okay. Um, now next to that you have your mouse echo feature. And this is turned off by default. And for those of you that have uh, gone to the uh, new user webinar, you know how mouse uh, echo works. Basically you point at text and it will read it back to you. So this will cycle through the modes. First is instant. Mouse echo set to instant mode. So if I move my mouse over any text, the Gettysburg Address. It'll read that line of text back to me. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this. Okay, that's instant echo. It'll immediately read it to you. If I press the button again to go to hover echo. Mouse echo sent to hover mode. Now in hover, it won't immediately read the text um, until I hold my mouse pointer stationary. Proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in A. Okay, so I held my mouse pointer there for about a half second and then it read it. So that's what mouse echo does. This button uh, toggles the modes instant, hover, and off. Mouse echo disabled. Okay. And then the last button you have all the way at the right hand side here, this enables and disables speech. Speech disabled. Okay. Speech is turned off. 
Speech enables on, and I'm going to leave it off for the rest of the webinar. Speech disables. Okay. All right. So those are all the function keys across the top. Those are their default um, settings. Now what I'm going to do is show you the actual ZoomText keyboard software and show you what you can do in that. Okay, so in your system tray in the lower right hand corner of your screen, you're going to have an icon for the ZoomText keyboard. You double click on that, it'll bring up your ZoomText keyboard settings. Now here, you can actually see what each key is assigned to. Okay, so again, that Z, the start key, all the way at the left hand side, start ZoomText, you've got on off. So all these things that we went through are assigned in here. Um, now, the great thing about this is you can reassign it to do whatever you want. So let's say I want to change my start key. I, I've got ZoomText set up to come up automatically. I don't need a key to turn it on and off. I can either double click on this or click on assign key. And from here, I can do a number of different things. I can use the default setting, which starts and exits ZoomText. I can unassign the key, meaning it won't do anything if I press it, or I can change it. So I can have it uh, do a new zoom text command, a new Windows command, or start a program. Okay, so let's check out some of the zoom text commands here. I'll click next. So from here, I'm going to have listed all of the different hotkey commands that I can do in zoom text. So let's say um, I want to change this hotkey to say the current time. Okay, so I'll click that and then choose finish. All right, so now we see our start key is now assigned to, say, time. So I'll press that button on the keyboard. Actually, I need to enable speech first. Speech enabled. So I just pressed my, uh, the rightmost key, which enables speech. And now I'll press that start key that I reassigned to, say, time. 11.21 AM. OK, so it tells me that it's 11.21 AM. So that's kind of a nice way you can reassign it to do various Choose from text a list functions. zoom text command speech disabled. Um, that you can see listed here. Okay, so if you wanted it to trigger a reading zone, you could do that. Um, most features are going to be in here, and actually, this is kind of a cool one. You can cycle through. Um, you, you can change it to a zoom text, a different zoom window. So let's say I want that button to um, turn on the lens mode. All right, so I'm in full screen right now, and now that I've assigned it to the lens, I'll press that key. Now I'm in lens mode. This is a cool way to cycle through uh, zoom window types. If you have a certain one that you like, um, you can just change to it by pressing that key. Okay? Let's go ahead and set this back to full. All right, so that's what you can do. You can assign it as different zoom text command. Now let's, uh, let's go to uh, a different key. We'll go to the next one, which is the on off. And we'll reassign this to do a, a Windows command. So here, you've got a number of different um, commands that you can do within the operating system as well. So you've got commands here to uh, do things in the browser like back and forward, go to your home page, refresh the page. Um, you've also got the ability to launch the calculator app, the default mail application, um, or media player controls as well, and even one to launch my computer. Let's go ahead and choose that. Um, a nice one here is volume controls. You know, you may not use something like the finders, so maybe you want to uh, change the finders to volume down and volume up. Okay, so I'm just going to reassign these and show you that they work. So I'll just click on this here. So I've assigned uh, the desktop and uh, desktop finder and web finder keys to adjust my volume. So if I press those. You know, I'm adjusting the volume down. Okay, you can see that that's reflecting the volume mixer here. Okay, so you've got a lot of customization here. I mean, by no means do you have to use the default settings. If you don't use some of the Zoom Text features, you can reassign them right in the keyboard software. Um, so those are some of the Windows uh, settings that you have available to you as well. Now. Uh, let's go back here, and the last example I want to show you is you can even use these buttons to launch an application. Um, so the last custom key assignment here, start a program, web page, or document. Now in the case of a web page, you can just type in the URL. 
okay, like AI squared com. Click on finish. You might need the HTTP. It might need to be the right format. I'll click finish. All right, so now my on off button is going to launch the AI squared homepage. So, you know, again, that's pretty cool. If you know, if you don't need to use some of these default functions, you can have them uh, do other things for you as well. Starting an application, choose the same option here. Click on the browse button, and let's see. Um, try and find an application. I'll use an an Office app here. Now you have to actually browse for the executable. This isn't going to give you a list of programs. When it launches an application, you have to go to the program executable. So you have to know where it's installed on your computer. Um, so I'll say I want this to launch Excel. Okay, I'll click Finish. All right, so now my toolbar button will launch Microsoft Excel. Okay, so there's really an endless amount of customization that you have available with the ZoomText keyboard software, and that's really what it makes what makes it unique. I mean, the, the main benefits are it's large print, it's high in contrast, and you have um, the utility of those ZoomText function keys to help you use ZoomText. But if you're a real power user, um, or if you like to customize things, you're going to love what you can do in the keyboard software, which is reassign those keys to do various other functions that you might find useful. So again, you have three different options here. You can use the default key. Um, you can unassign it if for whatever reason you don't want that key to do anything. Or you can change it to a list of Zoom text commands, Windows commands. And, and some of these Windows commands are pretty limited. They're mostly media player um, controls, volume, and launching some default applications as well as the browser. But a lot of these are, are things that you might be doing quite often, like the volume controls. And then really, I think what's really nice is you can launch an application, a web page, or even a document. So you know, maybe you're, you're launching programs like Outlook every day when you start your computer. And instead of hunting for the Outlook icon you know, through your system, your, your programs list, you can just assign it to a key in here and then press it once you get to your workstation, uh, once you get into the office. Okay, so that's, that's what the ZoomText keyboard um, software is going to allow you to do. If you ever get stuck and you thought, oh man, I really screwed this up, click on the Restore Defaults button, and it'll bring you back to the factory defaults. Okay? So that's a, a kind of a, a little in-depth look at the keyboard software. And all of the keys are reassignable, all those function keys across the top. Now, a lot of people um, ask us, you know, they, they may have a, a, a different workstation that's not a Windows machine, and they want to know whether or not the keyboard works on a Mac. Um, the keyboard itself will work just fine on any computer that has a USB port. Just those function keys aren't going to work uh, on a Mac. So if you want to you know, just a large print keyboard on a Mac, for example, you could use it, but you wouldn't have the utility of the function keys. Okay. Next thing I'm going to show you, um, and I'm going to go ahead and turn our camera back on here. Camera. So let's say you want an easy way to reassign these keys, but it's kind of a pain to go into um, the ZoomText keyboard software. Let me just readjust this and also adjust the focus here. Okay, so let's say I want to reassign um, our plus key up here. I can do this right on the keyboard by holding down the Alt key. So hold down Alt and then press the plus key. That's going to immediately open the ZoomText keyboard software to the appropriate key that I've pressed, and then I can reassign it. So this is a nice handy hot key so that you don't have to go down to your system tray and find the ZoomText keyboard software um, again hold down Alt, you know, press any key that you want to reassign, opens it up in the ZoomText keyboard software, and I can reassign it from there. So that's, that's a nice handy hotkey as well um, if you want a quick way to be able to reassign those keys. Okay, again, Alt and then the other key. Did anybody have any questions yet? Yep. Okay. All right, so um, that pretty much covers the demonstration part um, of the keyboard. It's pretty simple. Um, I mean, you know, the first thing you want to do when you get the keyboard, I should mention too, is install the software CD. Um, if you don't install this, 
uh, it's not going to work. These function keys will probably do some Windows functions like volume up, down, mute, and things like that. So make sure you install the software CD first and then plug in your keyboard. It will work before installing the software, but uh, those Zoom Text function keys won't work. You also need to be running Zoom Text 9.04 or newer. If you've got an older version of Zoom Text that's version 8 or older, the keyboard's not going to work with it. So make sure you're running at least Zoom Text 9.0 um, before uh, trying to use a Zoom Text keyboard. Okay, so. One thing I, I just wanted to add, if you look at the layout of the keys at the top, if you can feel around, sometimes it's a little hard to see all those icons Emma. that are above the buttons. But one thing that we did when we changed our keyboard design is we put that pack of four buttons in the center so you can feel feel around instead of trying to struggle and, and see the little icons. And what's a handy thing to remember is everything to the left of those four pack of buttons are all of your magnification features. And everything to the right is reading features. So just something to keep in mind. Yep, and that's a good point. So if you know, the icons might be a little bit difficult to see. So all the way at the left-hand side, you've got your kind of your start features, start, zoom text, enable, disable, and the toolbar, followed by the enhancements and the finders. And this middle four, as Becca mentioned, um, is significantly different than the others. So you can find that very easily. And immediately to the right of those, you've got your reading tools. And primarily, uh, most people are probably going to use App Reader. So, you know, just to the right of that four pack is going to be your button start app reader, which is also very handy. So um, it is laid out, even if you have a tough time seeing what each one of those icons are, um, it is laid out in such a way that makes it easy to kind of memorize that layout as well. And if you don't like the way that they're arranged, you don't care what the icons look like, again, you know, alt and then the key, reassign it however you want. If you want this minus button to launch app reader, or if you want this right arrow to launch app reader, you can reassign it to however you like. Um, maybe you only use a few features in Zoom Text and you want Zoom Up or Zoom Plus and Zoom Minus, App Reader, and Disable Speech. You know, you could set that up as well. So there's lots of customization. So even if you might forget, like I did at the beginning of the webinar, as to what one of the keys do, um, you can reassign it if you like also. Okay, so... Um, all right, so that does it for the demonstration. Just a few other things. Um, we're going to give you a 20% off uh, on any keyboard purchase that you make until the end of the week or really the end of the month. Retail price on the keyboards, they're $99 if they're bought separately from ZoomText. If you buy it with a new copy or an upgrade, it's a little bit discounted, but you'll get 20% off of that price as well. Um, if you call our sales department and mention that you attended the keyboard webinar. So just a nice little offer for everyone that attended the webinar here today. Um, so I'll go ahead and open it up to question and answer. I realize that was kind of a short webinar, but there's not really a ton to the keyboard. It's pretty simple to use. Um, so we'll go ahead and open it up to question and answer. If anyone would like me to unmute them, um, please click on there's a raise hand icon within the GoToWebinar software. Uh, otherwise, it'll take me about five minutes to unmute everyone that's here, and there's going to be so much background noise that no one will be able to understand anything that anyone asks. Uh, so if you do want to speak up, uh, I can unmute you. Otherwise, just go ahead and type your question into the chat panel or the questions panel, and we'll uh, read it aloud for everyone that's here today. Um, while we're waiting for some questions, um, I can't remember if Derek mentioned, but we did record this webinar, so if you came in a little bit late or if you just want to refer back to this, let's say after you purchase a keyboard and you want to refresh, we're going to post this later today on our training page, which is aisquared.com slash training. And then on the left, just click on recorded webinars and you'll see it there.
Another thing to mention too, I know, oh, looks like we just got a question. question. <laughs> oh, no questions. <laughs> I right. got all excited. There was a question, and it's actually a no question. <laughs> All right, we'll go with the first question here. How many keyboards can we purchase with the discount applied? I work for the Adaptive Technology Department for an organization. I don't think we have a limit. You're welcome to order as many as you would like. Um, this is just a little bonus for attending our webinar, so feel free to order as many as you'd like. Next question, will the new features in ZoomText 10 have a hot button created in the near future? I think at this point the keyboard design itself, I don't think we have any immediate plans to change. We probably will change it at some point to incorporate those features. Um, I don't see it happening in the immediate term. But you can, we are going to be releasing a version of the keyboard software. I'm actually running it here today. I don't know if we've officially released it or not. But you can reassign any of those keys to do some of the ZoomTex 10 functions, like start the camera start background reader, start Zoom Text Recorder. Um, so that will be available in the software, even if there are not dedicated buttons for it. Uh, somebody asked, can you use two keyboards simultaneously on the same PC? Yeah, you can use two keyboards. If you've got a laptop um, and you plug in an external keyboard, both keyboards will work. If you have a desktop machine, um, I believe that they will both work at the same time. Uh, I don't know why you'd want to use two on a desktop PC, but in the case of a laptop, you know, you've got an internal keyboard, so you're going to have two anyway. But yes, they should both work at the same time. Um, somebody asked, have you had any computers that the keyboard doesn't work with? Um, not that we're aware of. Uh, since it's a, a regular USB keyboard, it should work on any computer. Uh, another question, assigning camera functionalities to programmable keys on the ZoomTex keyboard. Um, I think I, I covered that. That will be in the keyboard software. Um, if it's not out now, it will be out soon. Um, might want to check with tech support on that as well. Oh, for student cooperation, the person that asked about two keyboards, uh, they were asking for student cooperation to have two of them. Yeah, that should work just fine. Uh, let's see. Right. One person had a comment about the caps lock key. Um, not being able to see the light that indicates whether or not it's activated. Uh, located in the upper right. I think. I think the orientation of those keys. Oh, they're in the same spot. I think the num lock might be inverted. Usually the num lock is on the left-hand side of those three lights. Um, we do work with a third-party manufacturer in terms of making these keyboards. So in terms of changing layouts and things like that, we're very limited as to what we can do. So um, like I said, we are investigating other keyboard um, layouts, but probably not in the near term. Um, so as far as the cap lock light goes, there's unfortunately not much we can do about that. Um, there is third-party software out there, I know that there is, that will show you on screen whether or not NumLock, Caps Lock, and Scroll Lock are on. Um, some laptops don't even have light indicators anymore. Uh, they just show you on screen what's activated. So if there's users having problems with that, might want to investigate some third-party software to take care of that. Um, somebody had a comment, works on all laptops. Yeah, it'll work on on any laptop, as long as it's got a USB port. <laughs> OK, Kimberly, it looks like you've got your hand up. I'm going to go ahead and unmute you. Go ahead. Go ahead, Kimberly. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Go ahead. I already, I already asked about all computers. Um, how about netbook computers? Have you had any conflicts with it working with netbook computers? Nope, not that we're aware of. Um, I don't, I wouldn't anticipate there to be any issues. There's nothing, the keyboard itself is just a regular keyboard, um, what is it, 104 key or 101 key, I forget. So 
there's nothing special about the keyboard itself. Um, and even those function keys are normal key codes that you would find in, in multimedia keyboards. So um, there shouldn't be any conflicts that you find out there. Thank you. Great webinar. Yep, thanks, Kimberly. Um, I think another person had a question, and they had their hand up, and they lowered it. Uh, Ani, I think is that that's how you spell it, or how you say it? I'm going to go ahead and unmute you and just see if you had a question for us. Okay, no, maybe not. Okay, let's see. There are any other questions here? One thing I wanted to just add, too, is I go to all kinds of different trade shows and conferences, and I have to tell you, this keyboard attracts a lot of attention, um, even from people who don't need Zoom text. I'm always kind of surprised that people come up and they're like, oh, I want one of these for my computer. <laughs> so while the buttons at the top are what makes this keyboard even more of a benefit, you know, just having those large print keys and having those um, black and yellow, really high contrast keys is a huge benefit to you. I think you'll find that it helps you with typing. You don't have to squint down at the um, at the keyboard anymore, especially on the laptop. I'm using one over here. Um, it's actually Derek's laptop, and the keys are, I mean, the letters are like about three millimeters um, in size. So it really is a nice feature to have keys that really do stand out better than standard keyboards. Another thing too, kind of a side point to that, even if you don't use Zoom text, if you bought the keyboard, you could reassign those function keys to have them do whatever you want. Windows functions open a program. So, you know, you might think, well, those function keys are useless for me if you're not a Zoom text user, but that's actually not true because through the software, um, you can reassign them and have them do whatever you want. So, which is kind of nice. I mean, it is nice to have buttons to adjust your volume and things like that on your computer. A lot of laptops even have that, but usually you have to press the function key and then another key uh, in order to do so, and it's kind of a pain. So um, the multimedia aspect of the keyboard is useful as well, even if you're not a ZoomText user. And even if you are as well. And yeah. You put so many keys up there. There's 18 of them that, you know, if you just, if maybe you're just a magnifier user or maybe you just never used the, the typing echo, for, for instance, so you can always reassign them to do regular keyboard, um, keyboard, <laughs> regular computer functions to give yourself, you know, even more things at your fingertips. It's not just Zoom text. The other thing I wanted to add with our two different color combinations, the black and yellow one does tend to be more popular. It's just higher in contrast than the black and white. <laughs> But that said, we do have a lot of people who don't want something quite so standout-ish, for lack of a better word, at their desk. And, you know, sometimes students don't want to seem different. So that's why we, we have the black and white keyboard, which is a more standard color um, for keyboards. So, again, it's all personal preference. You know, some people love the black and yellow. Some people really can't stand it, and they like the black and white. So that's why we just have multiple options to try to suit everybody's needs. Try and give you a side-by-side -side here as well, just to see. I can't really do them both at the same time. There's just not enough room, but maybe we can kind of squeeze them in a little bit so you can see the difference. I'm also going to pull up pictures on the website so you can see the yellow one a little bit better than what I can illustrate here. Because we've got a couple pictures on the website that'll show you the full color uh, a little bit better here. Oops. So here's a picture of the yellow on black, or excuse me, black on yellow, black lettering yellow keys, okay? And then the white on black, white lettering on black keys. And again, it's really a personal preference. Uh, like Becca said, there are some people that love the yellow keyboard. There are others that absolutely hate it. So it's really a personal preference. Uh, I think sales-wise, we sell more of the yellow on, or black on yellow. But you, know, you might prefer the white on black. <laughs> All right.
Now another thing I want to mention for those of you that um, uh, a gentleman just asked a question if black keys with yellow lettering is possible. Um, we've looked at other color combinations, uh, but at this time we're probably just going to stick on with the two schemes. I don't know if, I'm sure it's possible to make that color scheme, but um, I don't know if we're going to deviate from the current ones that we have right now. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention for any of you that, you know, maybe thought of a question afterwards that you forgot to ask or had problems asking questions through GoToWebinar, uh, you can always contact us. Um, the webinar staff's email address is learning at AISquared.com. Kimberly has her hand up. Kimberly, go ahead. I just unmuted you. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure, so if somebody buys the keyboard with the software that comes with it, Are you asking if the software, if the they software to comes, I'm sorry, the software comes with the keyboard, so it's not, it's not additional to the keyboard, it comes in the package. I think maybe Correct. what you might be confused about is we have a discount for when you buy it with ZoomTech software, it's not the keyboard software, that always comes in the box. Okay. So my question is, if someone doesn't need ZoomText, but they're just wanting to purchase the keyboard because they're wanting to reprogram the keys to launch all kinds of things, they don't really need ZoomText. They just need the keyboard with the software that comes with the keyboard. Exactly right. Yep. OK. There's a lot of questions. Um, let's see. There was one person that asked about ZoomText 10 in Windows 8. Uh, right now, we don't have a version of ZoomText that will work in Windows 8. I know this is an aside from the keyboard, but um, I'll mention it since it came up. Um, we will have more information on that in Q4 of this year. We're planning on having a ZoomText version available for Windows 8, but right now we just don't have anything uh, that will work in the operating system. We are working on it. Um, so just keep an eye out. We will have more information as the release date gets closer, but ZoomText 10 will not work in Windows 8. Uh, let's see. One software. So somebody asked a question, and I'm, I'm just trying to understand the question. They asked when the software comes out for 10. Oh, oh, I see what you mean now. Yeah, I mentioned that there's newer keyboard software for the ZoomText 10 features. That's a free update um, for the keyboard software. So any updates that we do for the keyboard software is free. Um, there is an automatic update feature within the keyboard software. If you go to, and I'll just show you real quick. Go. Um, if you go to your programs menu, all programs, there's a folder for the ZoomText keyboard. In here, there's a check for updates um, shortcut, and that'll check for any updates. Alternatively, you can contact our tech support department, and they can tell you where you can download an update. And I'm sure, um, you know, if you're on our email list, we do send out announcements periodically, and that would certainly be something that we would send out an email about. So you'd certainly know that way, too. Jim asked about um, getting an email with a summary of today's presentation. Jim, what I'll probably do is just send everyone a link to the recorded webinar um, and everything. You know, you can just refer to the webinar to go over everything uh, today. And I think we'll probably just remind you guys that you have until the 31st to take advantage of the 20% off. Yep. yep. And there's not, again, there's not a specific code that you have to use just when you call up, just mention that you attended the keyboard webinar. But Derek will put that in the email. Um, Daniel had a question. He said, what is the status of the CCTV capability? Um, Daniel, can you elaborate on what you meant by that question? I'm not sure I understand. 
Maybe you're referring to Image Reader, the OCR product that we'll be releasing later this year. Okay. Um, Image Reader, we're going to be releasing, again, probably Q4. Um, we are still working on it. It should be out shortly, hopefully within the next couple months. Um, it's going to come with a document camera. I don't really have a lot of details on it other than um, it's going to be a very fast and accurate um, OCR program that will allow you to take a picture of printed material and have it read back to you. And uh, it's going to retail for under $1,000. We haven't established final pricing, but um, it'll be uh, much more affordable than many other products that are on the market right now. So keep an eye out for that. We'll have a ton of information on our website once we're closer to release, and I'm sure we'll have um, videos for it as well. Um, I just wanted to chime in. There was a question about if I purchase this from a Canadian dealer, would they offer a 20% discount? This is something that we are doing um, for purchases directly from us just because we gave the webinar um, it's kind of a one-time little special just for the week. So if you want to take advantage of that, that is something you'd have to call us up and order from us. Um, someone else, Jim, had a question uh, about having trouble reading PDFs and wondering if Image Reader would help with that. Um, Zoom text, if you're having problems with Zoom text reading PDF documents, um, definitely contact support because it should work. The only instance where we won't be able to read a PDF document is if it's a scanned image that hasn't been converted to a text document. It's just a picture. Um, image Reader will not allow you to convert an entire PDF document. However, you can OCR um, anything that's visible on your screen. So if it was a one-page PDF document that you wanted to OCR, you could bring it up and have Image Reader um, OCR that portion of your screen and have it read back to you that way. Um, that being said, there are programs out there um, that allow you to OCR PDF documents, and I think they're relatively inexpensive. They might be like $20 or $30. Um, that sort of functionality we are looking into for future releases of Image Reader, but it won't be in the initial release. Lots of good questions, by the way. Um, I mean, this is this is perfect. This is exactly what we were hoping for: is that everyone would ask questions, and you know, we could give you guys some time to um, ask us anything that you were curious about. All right. Are there any more uh, questions before we end the webinar for today? And um, again, if you have anything afterwards that you think of, you can always email learning at AISquared.com, and uh, we can answer your question that way as well. But we will follow up with the recording of the webinar and just remind you about the discount offer. Um, you can just call our sales department, mention that you attended the webinar, and you can get 20% off of your keyboard purchase. Thank you, Daniel. We, we, we love doing these webinars, too. It's great to get uh, a lot of participation with people. So thank you for your, your questions and your comments. Much appreciated. All right. Well, it doesn't look like there's any more questions, so I'll go ahead and end the webinar for today. Um, thank you guys for attending. Hope you enjoyed the webinar, and uh, have a great rest of the day.